Hey, this is Mark with The Practical Still. We're going to open a new bottle today. I'm pretty excited about it. It's something um, not expensive, not particularly hard to get at the moment, though it is a limited edition. So how often do we get a limited edition whiskey uh, that has an MSRP of uh, 23 bucks or less? And I actually got these for 18. So that is going to be the old tub. So this is a Jim Beam product, uh, way, 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 way back when Jacob Beam started distilling whiskey. He had a name uh, for a while, but then not, not long after that, he moved to the brand Old Tub, and that was produced until around Prohibition, and then when everything got shut down, that kind of got lost. He gave the name up, um, and it's been revived. It was part of a deal, as I read, that Booker No did when they first sold the Beam brand. That One of the stipulations was they'd always sell Old Tub, so it was a gift shop, a uh, 375 milliliter bottle, uh, bottled in bond, had an age statement at four years, um, and it was popular in the gift shop, never got to try that. Um, so why do we care so much about an inexpensive whiskey? Well, uh, a couple things. One is it's bottled in bond. I like bottled in bond whiskeys. Uh, two is it's a cool old name and a cool old label. That's always fun. But does the whiskey matter? So uh, this one's unfiltered. Uh, they say no charcoal filtering, nothing really other than screening out the big chunks of uh, char. So that's exciting, close as you can get to being able to thieve the barrel yourself. Um, and the other reason is that um, they had a limited edition distiller's cut for a while, and I liked it a lot for a 20-something dollar bottle. Um, and so I bought quite a few of those. They make good sippers. They're decent. Uh, you know, not going to blow your mind. Uh, not age dated, but 100 proof, just like the bottled and bond version. Uh, not filtered. And that, to me, kind of made it like an inexpensive 100 proof version of Booker's. Sort of a Booker's Junior or a Booker's Light. I like Booker's. Dan, as you've heard him say quite a few times, huge fan of Booker's. That's probably one of his favorite, if not his favorite, uh, whiskey. And so I got into these distiller's cuts as an easier way that was accessible to have something that was kind of similar. Um, and this feels like that's following up on that. So these, uh, at least at the moment, readily available um, anywhere from 18 to 23 bucks. And we're going to find out if it's A, similar to my uh, friend here, the distiller's cut, and B, does it even come close to hanging out with uh, Booker's, even though Booker's has got at least 20 to 25 or 30 proof points on it, depending on the release. Um, and so I'm kind of excited about that. So let's give it a try. Oh, and look, synthetic cork, where the distiller's cut is a, a, a screw top. Not particularly relevant, but nice. Does not smell exactly like uh, beam distiller's cut. And you may have noticed lately I've been in one of these little short fatter glasses from Libby that's the, I think the Kentucky Bourbon Trail glass. But uh, again, I wanted to see how familiar and I haven't opened these and didn't want to open them right this minute. So I went back to the old familiar Glencairn. Oh, there it is. So it's oaky. It's oaky and bright. We know this doesn't have an age statement. It's at least four years old because that's part of the bottle and bond stipulation. But it seems a lot lighter than distiller's cut and certainly nothing like you'd nose out, uh, out of some bookers. That's okay. I don't know. I mean, it's got to be pretty much the same whiskey as the distiller's cut. I've seen some people say the uh, the Prohibition, the Repeal Batch, Jim Beam. It's another bottom shelf contender that's always real nice, great for cocktails, great on some. I, I haven't had that, but they, they tend to like it. I've read better than Distiller's Cut. I'm going to guess they're all pretty similar. It's the same mash bill uh, that uses, that's used in Booker's, uh, Baker's, Knob Creek, uh, and a lot of the Beam products. Um, it's the lower rye mash bill, not the high rye that's used in Basil Hayden and Old Granddad. But, you know, let's keep this in check. This is a bottle I paid $18 for, times three, because it's a limited edition. But it does not uh, taste the same as the uh, distiller's cut. For now, I'll taste them together. But for now, I like the distiller's cut a little better. It's a little less uh, that young oak on the front. And, of course, it's an unfiltered whiskey, so you're going to get some a little extra of that char. So we'll see. I like it. I certainly like it at the price. Um, I'll probably get a few more. Uh, for a while, the Stiller's Cut, it was a limited edition, but for a while, it looked like it was going to go on forever. Uh, but it has trailed off. I don't see it anymore in stores. So uh, luckily, in addition to this unopened bottle here, there's 
I don't remember how many, eight or nine of them down there in reserve. Um, I probably won't get that many of the old tub, but I'm happy with it for sure at that price. Let's live with it. We'll let it open up. We'll go back to the bottle later and uh, see what we think after we live with it for a while. For now, though, if you see it, get it. It's a fun piece of history, even if in name only, um, and a decent whiskey for the price. Thanks. Cheers.